Hello, my name is Matthew Hykov with BMC Atrium Orchestrator. Today, I'd like to talk about creating a lock in a workflow for Atrium Orchestrator. Atrium Orchestrator, or BAO, can execute the same workflow any number of times simultaneously. There is no way to tell BAO that it can only run one instance of a given workflow at a time. Instead, what we need to do is change the workflow so it keeps track of whether or not an instance of it is already running and act accordingly. We can track this by creating a lock either internally or externally and referencing that lock when the workflow begins. If the lock is free, we set it and run the workflow, but if it is already set, we take some other action. There are several reasons to create a lock that disallows a workflow from running twice. The most common is to prevent multiple like changes to BAO or to external systems. For example, if a workflow writes to and reads from a local file, it can lose data if two instances of that workflow try to access or change the file at once. Or if two people want to use BAO to restart the same virtual machine, and they independently start a workflow to do it, one workflow may succeed while the other fails because the machine is already in the process of restarting. This can lead to confusion and false error messages. A less common use of a lock is to create a sort of while loop where a workflow checks the lock and waits for a while if it is already set. This is one way to have different workflows work with each other. Later versions of BAO have a while activity, but prior to BAO 7.8, you will need to create your own loop using a lock. There are three primary ways to store the status of a lock. The simplest is to use a global context item, which any workflow can read and edit like any other context item. This is quick and direct, but if you have a large number of locks in your workflow, they can cause high memory overhead. You can also store the lock externally, in a file or a database. Because these store data outside BAO, they do not have the same memory concerns, but because you need an adapter to read or change data outside BAO, these methods are dependent on the speed and availability of your adapters and the external file or database itself. Let's take a look at an example lock in a workflow. Here I have a switch activity that checks a global context item named workflow lock. If workflow lock contains the value false, I set it to true and take some action. Now if this workflow runs again, it will see that workflow lock is true and take the upper path. Because of this, I can have one and only one instance of this workflow on the lower path at any given time. When the actions in the lower path are complete, I set workflow lock back to false so later workflows can run. Let's test the workflow. It has entered the lower path, which means workflow lock is now true. If I cancel the workflow and try to run it again, it takes the upper path. This is the main issue with any lock. If the workflow never reaches the unlock step, it can prevent all future instances of the workflow from running. You should make sure you have a way to reset the lock. You can create a compensation workflow that unlocks the workflow if the problem occurs, or do what I did and create another workflow that clears the lock on demand. Thank you. Have a nice day.